The Senator from Montana. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank Senator Moran for his, for his comments. I didn't hear everything you had to say, but when I came in, one of the things you said was, we may not be the most important people in this process, and you are 100 percent correct. We are simply the conduit that was utilized to get this bill put into law. There are way, way too many people to thank on this legislation, uh, and I'm going to get to that, and I'll forget a bunch of folks, and I apologize right now. But the truth is, we today, the United States Senate today, has the opportunity to make history by passing the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, honoring our promise to address Comprehensive Toxins Pact Act. This is not a new issue. Generations after generations of Americans have gone to war, backed by a promise that we've made to them when they signed up that we would care for them when they got home. Unfortunately, that didn't happen in the case of toxic exposure. We failed them. This bill is about righting a wrong that has been ignored for just way too damn long. It's about Will Thompson. It's about Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson. It's about every American who's lost their lives to toxic exposures because of the duty that they have performed for this country. Sadly, it's too late to do right by Will and Heath and so many others, but today this body has a chance to do the right thing by their families and future generations of our all-volunteer military by passing the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our PAC Act. The days of ignoring the wounds from toxic exposure, wounds not seen until years after those days are gone, Conditions like hypertension and MGUS found in veterans like Robert Hunter, a proud Montanan who served in the Army as an engineering officer during the Vietnam War. Robert was exposed to Agent Orange during his service and contracted MGUS years later. He's one of the 66,000 veterans in Montana that would become eligible for relief underneath this bill. Not to mention every post-9-11 veteran in this country who would automatically receive VA health care. This includes more than 3.5 million post-9-11 combat veterans exposed to burn pits in Iraq and Afghanistan. This bill would also remove the burden of proof for 23 presumptive conditions called but caused by military toxic exposures from cancers to lung diseases. And it would codify a more transformed more transparent framework to establish future presumptions of service connections to ensure future generations of veterans are treated more fairly and the last and probably most importantly, it will allow the VA to make the decisions on toxic exposures instead of an act of Congress. In short, the PACT Act will allow hundreds of thousands of veterans across the country to access the VA care that they have been denied and give them the benefits that they have earned. Make no mistake, the VA will be given the tools it needs to hire more medical professionals and claims processors, establish more health care facilities and improve claims processing, ensuring we're meeting the needs of our veterans today, tomorrow, and in the future. The bottom line is this country is very capable of recognizing the physical, obvious wounds of war, a lost limb, a chemical burn, and we're taking the steps to recognize the mental wounds of war. But we haven't been recognizing the toxic wounds of war, and that will end today with the passage of this bill. Chairman of the Vet Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, and I've said this many times to the veteran service organizations, I take my cues from them, the veterans they represent. When I first introduced the Cost of War Act last year, together we set out with a clear goal, a goal to right the wrongs of decades of inactions and failure, by us, by our government, to provide all areas of toxic exposed veterans the VA care and benefits they need and that they have earned. We knew this was the only way to do this, was to put forth a package that took care of our past, present, and future veterans. I am grateful, and I mean this, because folks always talk about good friends on the Senate floor. Sometimes they mean it, sometimes they don't. I mean it. Thank you to my good friend, Ranking Member Jerry Moran, for working with me, with our committee, for creating an environment so our staffs could work together to create this new bipartisan toxic exposure strategy. 
And for my colleagues on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, particularly my friends like Senator John Bozeman and Senator Sherrod Brown, thank you. I'm thankful for the leadership of President Biden and VA Secretary Dennis McDonough, along with House Veterans Affairs Committee Chairman Takano, and so many, many others that are here today. This bill is the legislation we envisioned when we set out to right the wrongs of our toxic exposed deaths. This bill recognizes the cost of war. It's a bill our veterans and our families deserve and are counting on and cannot wait any longer for. Veterans and veteran service organizations and advocates have understood this for a long time. And they have been incredible partners since the beginning and I look forward to thanking each and every one of them in the days and the weeks to come. I want to speak directly to them now. I am grateful for your efforts. I am grateful for your voices, for never taking your foot off the gas and continuing to push members of Congress to simply do the right thing. I also want to acknowledge the countless hours put in by the staffs from both sides of the aisle. And Senator Mann is exactly correct. We take credit for their good work, and they do good work. Staff from my office, like Staff Director Tony McLean, as well as this guy right here to my left, Simon Kuhn, Dahlia Melendrez, James Cho, Yonko Mitrick, Tess Brzezinski, Shauna Rust, Olya Vatojevich, and Liz Simmons, but also folks across the aisle like Lindsey Deering and John Towers, Asher Allman, and Tom Brandt, Pat McGugan, Michelle Dominguez, and Dilly Sotomar, the, God, I wish they had names, they like Tester and, jo and Moran, and Mike Jones. Look, by sitting down in a bipartisan way to get this bill crafted, we were able to have success and get the job done. And that's what the folks who sent us here expects us to do. America's veterans and their loved ones would be better off as a result of this work today. And the result of that, it will make this country a better place. There is always a cost to war, and that cost is never fully repaid when the war ends. So I've got one question. Are we willing to show these millions of veterans that we have their back, that the United States government has their back? Are we willing to admit that we didn't live up to the promise of veterans like Will Thompson and Heath Robinson? But the fact is, I believe today will show that we can put party politics aside and honor America's bravest. We can honor the plea of Heath's eight-year-old daughter, Brielle, and the fight for the heroes who fought for our country and pass my dad's act the Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson Pact Act. And we can begin settling our debts to millions of other veterans and their families today. The last thing is what I'm going to close with is that the work is not over with, assuming this bill passes today. The ranking member is 100 percent correct. We're going to have a lot of oversight to do to make sure that the veterans get the, the health care and the benefits that they have earned and that they deserve. That is the congressional intent that we have with this bill. So oversight will be critically important. I yield the floor.